welcome to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. After anti-Israel protesters blocked traffic on several of the country's most iconic bridges yesterday, Senator Tom Cotton encouraged frustrated drivers to take matters into their own hands and throw protesters in the water. Let's watch. I agree with you that you have to get to these, pro or these uh, criminals early. If something like this happened in Arkansas on a bridge there, let's just say I think there'd be a lot of very wet criminals that have been tossed overboard, not by law enforcement, but by the people whose uh, road they're blocking. If they glued their hands to a car or a, the pavement, well, probably pretty painful to have their skin ripped off. But I think that's what, the way we'd handle in Arkansas. And I would encourage most people anywhere that get stuck behind criminals like this uh, who are trying to block traffic to take matters in their own hands. There's only usually a few of them, and there's a lot of people being inconvenienced. It's time to put an end to this nonsense. Cotton expectedly was derided by his opponents, including MSNBC's Joe Scarborough, who blamed Cotton's comments on, that's right, President Trump. I will tell you if a senator if a, um, of either party or a member of Congress of either party said, we need to throw people off the bridge, we need to rip their skins off their hands, in any time before Trump, that senator would be apologizing this morning. No, won't, won't, won't even won't even leave a mark. No, those are, those are the quaint He'll probably days. raise more money on it. Yeah, well, that's... that's hey, a, I said we should rip the skin off of people and kill sorry. them by throwing them off the Brooklyn Bridge. Wow. Send $25 to Tom Cotton for Senate right now. It's the world we live Can in. Can you believe the left-wing media, the angry... No, I'm more conservative than Tom Cotton, probably. I don't know what his ACU rating is. Uh, this has nothing to do with ideology, but that's how they'll play it. So they're suggesting that violence is conservative. Mm. It's what Tom Cotton's suggesting. It's what Donald Trump's suggesting. It's what the, those people that use violent rhetoric are suggesting. It's just not. It's the opposite of being conservative. All right, so I, like most people, I assume, find protesters who block traffic, who obstruct bridges, to be incredibly obnoxious and not doing their cause much good, regardless of what they're protesting. They could be protesting, like, get Robbie another TV show or something. And I'd be like, well, would, would you get out of the street? You're in people's <laughs> way. Um, so I think this is bad. I think, obviously, you don't have a right to do it. The police do get to come and move you out of the way of the road or the bridge or whatever. That said, I don't think Tom Cotton, and it was one thing to lament that people might take matters into their own hands. He did, though, say at one point, I encourage people to take matters into their own hands. And I think that is not good advice. Yeah, it's a little too far. I mean, the idea of someone being thrown off of, like, a small bridge is funny, like right? Like into a kiddie pool? Yeah, like the idea that they'd get, like, thrown into a creek or something. Right. Obviously, if you throw someone off the Golden Gate Bridge, They're they dead. will probably die. Yeah. Uh, it's like a 99% chance of them dying. So that's not great. Um, but I understand what he's getting at, right? I mean, this is the type of protest that is not just inconvenient for some people, but really is a matter of life and death. When you have emergency vehicles that are unable to get across these bridges or get through roadways, you have women who might be in labor. There's been cases of individuals missing their parole hearings and then getting thrown in jail because they weren't able to get there on time because of these protesters. So this is not a small matter when people block roadways like this. This is actually very serious, and we absolutely should be encouraging law and order where these people are handled by police officers because it is illegal to do this. But because we have such feckless leaders in so many of these cities that won't handle these protesters themselves, it seems almost inevitable that you're going to have these clashes between civilian and protester uh, because people are going to get fed up with this kind of behavior. Yeah, and it's also, like, not my responsibility or, or any driver caught in that situation to, like, respond to it themselves. I mean... I'm obviously a libertarian. I want minimal government intervention. Um, I'm unwilling and uncomfortable having to pay for like a lot of government services, but the bare minimum government services of like maintaining order on their public roads, right? Like that's what we pay them to do. Like it's not it's not my job to get the protester out of the way. It literally is the job of the government, like one of the minimum things it's doing if it owns the public road. Now, if we were to privatize the roads, you could have the owner of the road <laughs> deciding what the policies are going to be and, you know, paying for their own security services. And that would probably be great in my own little Robbie fantasy land I aspire to have. But if we have a public road, we have a public bridge, the, the it should be left to the authorities to handle that. And they should handle it, to your point, because people do get 
caught in traffic. You know, I mean, what if you're what if you're in a in, in the middle of the desert and your AC stops working or you're you know running out the gas on your car or something like that. Gas prices are expensive enough. So it's just you know this I put in the same category of like the climate press uh, protesters who are throwing soup at paintings, which that doesn't that doesn't harm anyone, but it's just like what what good are you doing for your cause? Like who's saying, oh you did something like unreasonable and destructive and it's a nuisance to other people and now I'm more sympathetic to your cause. I, like I don't understand where that comes from. I think in, in this case with the Palestinian protesters, they're trying to like make you feel the, the suffering that they think is going on over there, but it just seems totally counterproductive to me. Yeah, I completely agree. And to your point about people getting stuck in these kind of things, I mean, there was an incident outside of DC in Virginia, I think it was two or three winters ago, where there was this massive storm and people got caught on 95. And you basically had um, people who were transporting food like in tractor trailers, having to hand out loaves of bread to people because they were there for like eight hours, essentially uh, at risk of starving where they had children who were going hungry. Um, so it's really uh, does affect people pretty intensely. And I just don't buy this idea that you have to subject yourself to the same conditions of other people in order to feel sympathy for them. So that's the fundamental flaw in their logic, these uh, pro-Gaza protesters. I'm also shocked that people are so surprised by Tom Cotton of all people saying this. I mean, this is the man who basically set the New York Times newsroom ablaze by simply suggesting that the National Guard go in to put down riots in the summer of 2020. Um, he wrote an op-ed for them. The newsroom revolted. You had people posting on Twitter that he was putting black staffers' lives in danger, which was kind of confusing because I don't think New York Times staffers should be joining riots anyway, and presumably if they weren't in the riots, sending the National Guard wouldn't put their lives in danger. But that was what they claimed because, of course, um, these people are afraid of free speech. So, I mean, this is not out of the norm, I guess you could say, for Senator Cotton by and, any means. And now, of course, um, Governor Hochul in New York, right? The New York Democratic authorities are, are using um, uh, <laughs> national state guard troops in the subway system along the lines of what Tom Cotton uh, suggested, and there's been no newsroom revolt. I, I do think, you know, going to Morning Joe's point at the end there, I do think it's incumbent on everyone, Republican officials included, to avoid um, violent rhetoric, uh, to try to de-escalate hostilities in our society if we possibly can. Yet, yeah, was the op-ed uh, racist or inflammatory that he wrote about about the how to handle the rioters in the past? I don't think so. Did I agree with the proposal? No, not really. Um, here, do I do I understand the frustration where he's saying how we all feel about wanting to get people out of the way on, on the bridges? Yes. Do I think it's good for a public official to like really say, yeah, you should shove them out of the way? I mean, it's not good for you. You're going to get arrested if you do that. So this is, I think this is true for all of our elected officials that like they, they've started to sound to me like um, almost like, well, this isn't a surprise, reality TV personalities. I mean, Donald Trump was one. And it's like fun for them and it's entertainment and it's a celebrity. But like maybe, maybe it's, not good to be leaning into that so much. There's kind of a de delineation between saying, um, you should do this mm -hmm. versus if you do it, I understand why you did it. I'm probably not going to fault you for it. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if someone continued to drive through the protesters, like obviously you're not trying to run somebody over to kill them, but if you're in an emergency situation and some sometimes these protesters will come up to your car and try to break in, they've thrown people out previously and like beat them up. If I see a bunch of a swarm of people coming out my car, I'm gonna obviously try to get out of there in whatever way I possibly can. So I just think that there's, like you said, encouraging, like there's a, a line between encouraging and saying like, I understand, um, yeah. do what you have to do kind of thing. But yeah, but telling people to rip skin off of people's hands no. is, is yeah. just kind of gross. Yeah. And <laughs> Yeah, and telling, I think I've said that in one of, our, one of our previous segments, telling people to do something that could get them in legal jeopardy to get the person you're telling to do is never a good idea and is something that happens like way too much. Nobody, nobody willfully put yourself in an environment where you're going to commit a crime, but we can call on our experts and our police and our professionals to handle the situations and hopefully make the roads safe and clear for everyone to use the way Defend they Defend yourself be. if you need to, yes. but Self-defense, yes. yes. Not aggression, defense. Yes, self-defense. Yeah, all right. Thanks for watching Free Media. You can find more content like this at Reason TV's homepage on YouTube and at Reason.com. We'll be back in just a minute.